Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper. In this video, I will explain why and when you might want an RF choke on your antenna feed line and how to make one very easily for just a few dollars. Now, I will start by saying that if you don't have any problems with your antenna system, you probably don't need one. But it's a good thing to have just in case if you change antennas regularly, like for portable operations, because you never know when you're going to need an RF choke and when RF currents are going to be a problem. Actually, there are antenna configurations that are more prone to stray RF current, but we'll start with one that isn't, and that's the regular dipole. Let's look at a regular dipole. So this is a half-wave wire and a dipole is usually fed in the middle. So right here, you would have your feed line or coax, you know, ladder line or coax feeding the antenna in the middle. So you can see right away here that the two sides of the antenna, so of course we have a quarter wave here and a quarter wave here, are the same length. So there is no imbalance, no current imbalance between the two sides. So uh, the power will be uh, radiated gracefully, so to speak, and there won't be any stray RF currents coming back on your feed line, like on the shield of your coax. Now, let's say that we're going to make a Windom antenna. So we're going to feed our antenna here. So the feed line would be right there. Now you can see here that uh, the two uh, parts of the antenna are in the same length and that's going to cause problems. This isn't saying that uh, the Windom doesn't work, of course, but it's saying that you would have to take some precautions and put a choke here or, you know, even for some antennas a little bit further down, but uh, you're going to have probably some stray RF currents. And this is a bit oversimplified, of course, but it's the best way I found to explain it. Now, another kind of antenna that often causes problems and, and caused me a lot of trouble is the random wire antenna with a 921 UNUN. So that's an underfed wire with a transformer, but it's not the, the correct length. It's not a half wave. So, uh, it's used most of the time for multi-band operations because uh, you, know, you avoid the half wave, so you avoid the high impedance and you use a 9 to 1 UNUN, basically a transformer that's going to divide the impedance by 10. But I digress. <laughs> the fact is that uh, often, because it's not a half wave, uh, you have stray currents flowing back on the uh, shield of your coax and going back to your radio and sometimes yourself too. Now that can cause problems with the electronics, but it can also, uh, you can also feel it. And uh, once I was using my Elecraft K1 with a random wire on 30 meters, I was outputting five watts and I was using a, an aluminum uh, Morse key. And uh, I started calling and I immediately, I felt needle pricks in my fingers. You know, it was very unpleasant. Uh, it, I wasn't screaming in pain, but it was so unpleasant that I had to stop and I didn't have an RF choke. And so that was it. But if I had an RF choke, I could have kept on going. Also, sometimes uh, you have some radios that have microprocessors in them that are very sensitive to uh, those RF currents. And that can mess up the keying, for instance. Uh, also, uh, when you have uh, an automatic tuner, like I have the Elecraft T1, and sometimes uh, when I have stray RF currents, just T1 just doesn't tune anymore. It just goes crazy. <laughs> so uh, having an RF choke can be very useful. Now, let's have a look at what it looks like when it happens. My uh, keyer was uh, messed up by uh, common mode currents, so I had to add the, uh, an RF choke in line, uh, which is a good thing to have. Isn't it great when you can just insert your key in a crack in a rock and operate? <laughs> Couldn't be better. 
I was lucky I had an RF show that day with me because otherwise uh, that's it. I would not have been able to operate at all. And, uh, you know, a big part of the uh, that outing was actually to uh, <laughs> to do some radio. So I would have been very disappointed if, uh, you know, I couldn't have. And uh, that's the point. Uh, having an RF choke might just save the day. This is everything we need to build a choke. A plastic box, don't use metal, with two RF connectors. I prefer BNC. And uh, we have a toroid. FT114-31, 31. 31 material is probably the most used for chokes because it uh, fits nicely into the uh, HF uh, bands. So this will be good for about uh, 80 meters, so 3.5 megahertz to uh, about 20 meters, so 14 megahertz. And power wise, uh, some people say it will take 100 watts, but I would say probably 70 would be uh, the maximum I would use. Uh, you could also use an FT140-43, uh, but that will require a different number of turns because uh, on the FT114-31, we're going to wind six turns of coax. And uh, if you use an FT140-43, which I use for uh, 49 to 1 or 64 to 1 transformers, but can also be used uh, for choke, you would use either eight turns, that's for the lower bands, so again, 80 to 20 meters, or if you want the higher bands, like uh, let's, let's say 30 meters to 10 meters, you would use seven turns. And when I say turns, I mean turns of coax, uh, like uh, the uh, RG174 that I'm going to use here, that's about 15 inches, 40 centimeters. Uh, you could also use uh, RG316, I'm going to uh, prepare my uh, wire here, so I'll just cut about a centimeter off of the insulation. Careful not to actually uh, cut the braid, which would be bad. So you can feel it, you can feel it under your finger uh, when it starts uh, grinding on the copper. We're going to uh, take the braid here and separate it from the, from the center. And then I'll just uh, remove a little bit of insulation off the center here at the tip. It's so easy to cut the wire off. I have to be really careful. That's just to uh, make it easier to, uh, to solder later. Now, this is a very easy project. Uh, you know, it would be a good first project, actually. If you have never built anything, well, you know, here's something useful that... Uh, you'll probably uh, use and uh, it's it's easy to do. Now we're going to wind our toroid and if you can count to six, you can do it. Uh, it's not a tiny toroid like when you, you build a kit, you know, this is a uh, good size. So I'm just leave, uh, well, I'll make it kind of short because I know my box isn't that big. So I'll just, uh, I'll just do it like this and it, it should work. Okay, so one, every time the wire goes through the core, it's one turn, so that's one turn. Two. Now, I want them tight, but not too tight. Uh, I don't want to put a kink in the coax. You know, coax have uh, specifications that you, you're not supposed to bend them over a, a certain degree. So uh, just don't uh, overdo it. Uh, you just don't want the wire to be loose, but uh, you, don't want, you don't want it to be, uh, to be damaged either. I, of course, I forgot to count. <laughs> One, uh, two, three, four. Oops. I uh, probably should have put a, a tie wrap here, but again, you have to be careful with tie wraps because uh, if you squeeze um, the insulation uh, too hard, um, you're, you're going to change the impedance and that could uh, be a problem for the SWR. You want the wire to uh, the coax to cover about three quarters of the, uh, of the toroid. And that's six. And that's it, guys. I mean, that's all there is to it. You know, it's very simple. All right, I had to redo it and use uh, tie wraps because uh, the turns were coming loose. So, and now I'll just prepare the other side of the wire. I checked for length before, of course, uh, making sure I had enough. Tweezers are great. I'll be amazed if I don't burn myself or melt that box. 
All right, it's not great, <laughs> but uh, it will do in a pinch. I'm worried about this here. If it moves, it will uh, wear through it, but oh, I can push it aside. Okay, that's good. And here, here probably you will put a little bit of plastic here. All right, I put a bit of plastic uh, to insulate uh, the uh, toroid, although I don't think the toroid is conductor, but uh, eh, you know, I'll feel better that way. Let's check for continuity. Okay, no short. All right, it works. Now I'm going to hot glue the hell out of it. Just want to make sure that those pieces of plastic don't go anywhere. Also, I don't want the toroid to move. Now don't use epoxy for this, uh, don't pot the whole thing in epoxy because it's not going to work anymore. Uh, hot glue uh, doesn't uh, disturb the magnetic field, but epoxy does for some reason. I lost uh, two toroids uh, <laughs> figuring that out. Not pretty, but uh, nobody's going to see the inside of this box anyway. If you have an antenna analyzer and a dummy load, now's the time to check it. Usually a flat line is not what you want to see, but in this case it means the patient is doing fine. And that's how a few dollars can save you a lot of aggravation. Have a good one!